Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored. What's going on? My name's Tori and I'm here to talk about tech. NetCloud is a cloud managed offering from CradlePoint. So similar to Aruba Central or the Meraki dashboard or Cisco DNA Center, where we have a GUI offering to control our devices. Everything from monitoring to firmware to configuration can be done there. I'm really excited to jump into the lab and show you the CradlePoint IoT routers that I have, how I've got them set up, and do various learning exercises with you. If you haven't already, please go ahead and comment down below and tell me if you've worked with CradlePoint or not. Thank you so much for watching. Let's dive right into the video. Today we're looking at a CradlePoint IBR600C IoT series router. Let's go ahead and take a look. So inside the box, we've got the device itself. And you can go ahead and see here that is a very small form factor, right? Fanless, we look at the ports, the antenna mounts, antenna connectors there. Got a SIM card slot. I've already went ahead and put SIM cards in these. So you can see here the rest of the ports there. Pretty cool, pretty neat little device. So let's check out what's in the box. you have your serial number handy as it is going to serve as the default password here. You can see here that the device is online, however the device is both unregistered and unlicensed. This process is luckily super easy to bind these to your account. So all you need to do is log in with your NetCloud Net credentials, click register and give it a few minutes here. We can see here that it still shows the device as unlicensed. This in fact is not true. And actually there we go. So I was gonna say we could just go ahead and ignore that, but it quickly uh, pulled this license information from NetCloud. Okay, so we can see here that we have our router is now registered and configuration is synced. The device is online. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same for our other router here. I've moved the cable over to the secondary B router. Um, so that I can rouse to its IP address as well. You see here that this device is actually showing license, but it is unregistered. Um, it is licensed device, so there might be a reason why it displays a little differently than the first one. We'll go ahead and log in here, click register. And now we can go ahead and click over to NetCloud. Any moment now we should see this device pop in here. So we'll go ahead and refresh the page. There we go. Now we see both routers. All right, so now that the configuration has synced, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the CradlePoint Verify application on our phone and pretend we're an installer on site setting up these devices for the first time. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the CradlePoint Verify app. We're gonna go ahead and click new router installation and scan the bottom of one device. Go ahead and scan that in. We can now confirm the device contents, everything that comes in the box is listed. I'm gonna go ahead and add a note here, router A. acceptance for everything in the box. This is nice, it gives you some handy installation information for whoever's installing this to take a quick look at. You can go ahead and pause the video on any page if it's going too fast. Finally, we'll take some assembly pictures.
placement best practices. We'll go ahead and take a another photo for the final installation photo. And again, we're just testing this. Some device summary. And it looks like you can get a PDF as well. Go ahead and skip that for now. So overall, it looks like a pretty useful app. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump into NetCloud and continue on. We do see those devices now here in the dashboard. We can go ahead and apply some configuration. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the name to Router A and Router B. So we're gonna set these routers up using VERP, which is Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol version two. We're going to have an active and a passive router. So let's go ahead and create a template configuration to push to both of these routers. This will give us a nice base config that we can then uh, make some local changes to each device as needed. So the idea is to create a base configuration for the, the routers, attach both routers to that configuration, and then I'll make only the required changes to either router at the site level. So the device is gonna always prefer, unless otherwise configured, it will prefer site local configuration or the device local configuration over the template group configuration. So you can have some overrides there. Jump over to groups. We already have our test group configured. When you normally, when you create a group, you will set the NetCloud OS version and then all the devices will conform to that firmware. We can go ahead and click on configuration and summary. This shows me that these devices are gonna be fairly straightforward to configure and work with from an API perspective. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at what that configuration looks like. So under the connection manager, we're gonna have two connections. The first one is gonna be our ethernet profile. This is gonna include the WAN ports on the device as well as our next profile for SIM slot one. That's going to identify a SIM card in SIM slot one and configure it. This will allow us to have uh, a failover event if our ethernet goes down. So to set the priority for these, you will just click and drag to change that priority. You can edit one of the profiles by clicking on edit. Then you can get some additional configuration by coming over to the gears and clicking through the different feature sets. If we click on connection state, we're gonna actually want our ethernet to be always on. When we save configuration, any devices in the group are going to automatically synchronize with that new configuration. You'll come down here and click commit changes. Let's take another look at that configuration. So we see that our WAN interfaces are configured as we desire. If we take a look at failback, we'll be able to set our failback preferences for when our primary WAN connection comes back up. We can do this in a variety of ways. I'm setting it to immediate, which is the most brutal and harsh way to do it. It's going to immediately fail back, so you, you may have data loss. Uh, for TCP sessions that are currently going over the interface. There is some contextual base help here. So you can go ahead and see what the different modes do and make the best decision for your situation. For this demo, immediate is fine. So that's at a basic level, our WAN interface configuration. Go ahead and go to networking and take a look at our local networks. We can see here that our local network is primary LAN. This is all default. This is where we can leave this IP here but remember, since this is a template configuration, every device will pull this IP. So since we're setting these two devices up with VERP, we're gonna want to actually make the site local change on router B after it pulls its template configuration to change its IP address. We can go ahead and take a look at some of these other configuration items. You can see here, the selected interfaces is where you would actually uh, determine whether or not you're using a wired LAN port or even uh, allowing wireless clients to connect to the cradle point um, and use this primary LAN. We have our DHCP server that we're going to leave enabled and we are using VERP version 2. We're going to set our router IP as our virtual router IP will be .254. So our A router is going to be .1, our B router is going to be .2, and our VIP is going to be .254. If you click here, provide virtual IP and DHCP leases, we'll be able to allow the DHCP server to issue the virtual IP 
so that the client never really cares whether or not router A or router B is sending traffic. We're gonna put our router priority at 110 and put our initial router state to master. Go ahead and save. And again, we're gonna make some changes to our B router and make that our standby group router, change the priority and so forth. So that should be enough at a basic level to set these up and to show some configuration. So we'll go ahead and click commit changes. And now we will add some devices to this group. Select both our routers, click move, and click on our test IVR group. Let's go back over to the group. And here you can see we have two of two online, but zero of two have synchronized. Let's give it a few minutes and allow these to synchronize and pull their new configurations. So now that our devices are synchronized, we see two of two synchronized. We head back over to the device. We can actually see that our configuration is synchronized. What we wanna do is edit the B router and make some local site overrides. Go to configuration and edit the configuration. So we see that this device has adopted our desired WAN profiles. So we'll go ahead and just make those local changes that are required to make this our standby router. We want to make this lower than the A router so that it does not win any verb election and become our master router. In this case, we're also going to set the initial state to backup. With the verb, preemption is enabled by default. So if our A router goes down, we'll fail over to this router. But if our A router comes back up, our routers will automatically know how to fail back as well. We'll go ahead and click view pending changes. This gives us a nice view of the changes that are being pushed to the device. We'll click commit. The nice thing about the NetCloud dashboard is we're actually going to be able to see the overall status of the device live. It will automatically refresh. So if you click over here, you'll see that auto refresh is enabled. And this configuration change seemed to happen so quickly that we saw nothing. However, typically you will see that the device configuration uh, is being synchronized here. We'll give it a few minutes uh, and see if that status changes. Okay, so here we actually see now that the device has those local configuration changes. When you see this icon, you know that the device has been configured individually and has some different configuration from the template group. You can see the differences by clicking on the puzzle piece. You can also test this because my workstation is also on the LAN. So we should be able to browse to our B router at the IP we applied. So now we know that that configuration is all good. All right, so now we're ready to try our failover testing, see if everything is working as expected. In the terminal here, you can see that I have four interfaces configured on my office stack. On that switch stack, there are both router A and router B WAN interfaces. And then the LAN interfaces from router A and router B connect on VLAN 1030. Go ahead and minimize that for now. Here you can see I have a VPC running an EVNG and it is connected on VLAN 1030 as well. So for this configuration, I've just bridged out one of my network interfaces onto that same VLAN and created a LAN between EVNG and the two routers. Go ahead and do IP DHCP to try and grab an address. We can see here that we do now have an IP address and we at least did get our virtual IP as a gateway. So we'll go ahead and send a ping to 8.8.8.8 .8 and make sure we have full internet connectivity. So next we'll wanna send a trace to the same address. And this will show me that I am in fact going through router one. We're gonna go ahead and unplug router one completely and simulate a full failure. Before we do so, we'll create a continuous ping so we can detect any change in real time. Also keep an eye on NetCloud behind me here, as we may see device status change here as well. I've just simulated the full router failure, and we can 
gracefully fail over to router B. We only lost a little bit of data there. Let's go ahead and kill that. Now we'll want to trace again. And we can see that we are going through router B. And everything is good. So what if the ethernet connection on router B goes down? Then we'll fail over to a LTE cellular connection. Let's go ahead and simulate that here as well. So we'll go ahead and start our ping again. We'll go ahead and unplug the WAN connection from this router. And there you have it. We have failed over to LTE. We lost a little bit more data than we would have expected. We probably had about 10 seconds there before the internet kicked back on. However, that should be pretty minimal next time because I believe what, what occurred there was the uh, firmware had to be applied for the SIM card here. Let's go ahead and do a trace. We can see that now we're going through a little bit different of a path here. Last, with this continuous ping running, what we'll do is plug our WAN connection back in and allow router B to return to normal state. And then we'll plug our power back into router A and watch that fail back gracefully without dropping too many pings. Let's take a look. Here we can see our router A has failed back and we're not using any sub second timers here. So we did lose two pings just like we did the first time when we powered down the router. So that was some failover testing with LTE as a last resort and two routers running VRRP protocol or VERP. We can see now that both our routers are fully online and checked into the dashboard. Well, it's been my pleasure demoing this product for you and showing some basic features. Can't wait to dive into some of the more advanced features and things like API uh, and building kind of hub and spoke style networks and VPNs and things like that. I look forward to tinkering with these devices a bit more in the lab and I'll be sure to post the results online. If you haven't already, please go ahead and comment down below and tell me if you've worked with Cradle Point or not. Go ahead and like this video and then subscribe to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Have a great day.